Facing History in Ourselves, which is an American educational platform based in America, but with branches and offices all over the world. This particular educational platform deals with finding ways of challenging and combating prejudice, discrimination, inequality, and they bring together teachers and students from different disciplines and different age groups, trying to provide them with tools, with um, resources, with teaching strategies that they can use to challenge discrimination and prejudice. So this is the, the web page of, of Facing History, which you can access anytime. It's enough just to register and you will have full access to a variety of resources. And every time I go there and try to find something, I run into new yet unexplored sources. So it's really an abundance of useful ideas, which you can always adapt to your particular context, whether it's a classroom, a workplace, a training for your colleagues, whatever, I think you will find something that will fit your particular context. So I strongly recommend it to begin with. And my workshop will be based on their resources and tools. So I will begin with key terms in my workshop, identity, stereotypes, and prejudice. So what is identity? What is it that shapes our identity? Which parts are we given upon birth? Which parts can change throughout time? Which parts are determined by uh, our experience? And what happens when people perceive us differently than we would like to be perceived? Finally, I would like you to think about distinction between multiple identities and the concept of purity of identity, or what I will come to call a single story of, of oneself. In this particular slide, I outline some of the useful um, definitions of the terms which are often overlapping, um, stereotypes, prejudice, discrimination, they're quite similar yet there are important distinctions. And uh, for instance, stereotyping is something that we all do most of the time. And it's uh, basically attaching labels to people based on certain characteristics of the group to which they belong. This is not something only bad people do. This is something we all do all the time. I think it's something that the human mind is simply taught to do because we need to explain the world to ourselves. If the world is blurry and if we cannot distinguish between people, that feels very chaotic. So we need to define people, label them in some way, put them in a compartment. Uh, And that's how often stereotypes arise because we don't have the time, we don't take the effort to look at the individual in itself or in, or in himself. Prejudices will be, it will be an act of assigning certain values to people based on the group to which they belong. So we prejudge, we make a judgment in advance without again taking the time to meet the person. And finally, prejudice can become discrimination if we take action, if we act upon these generalized notions, which will basically mean that we forbid people to take part in certain activities, exercise their rights, or become members of other groups. It doesn't happen all the time, but it's sometimes a very likely outcome of stereotypes and prejudice. The most important thing is that these ways of thinking divide the whole world into us and them. Let me just read briefly a rather inspiring, at least to me, part of a speech delivered by a psychologist called Bina Kondola. It is a speech, actually, it's it's a short video, which you can find also in Facing History. And let me just read briefly, actually, this is a quotation from, the world is not divided up into those people who have bias and those who don't. It is divided up, though, into those who recognize they have bias and those people who think they have none. Now, one of the ironies is that those who believe they have no bias are probably the most biased because there is no reflection going on. If I believe I have no bias, Why on earth would I ever have to reflect on my behavior, review my decisions, or change anything about myself? 